Today, I'm flying first class in this Gulfstream jet all the way to Antarctica. Most people take a ship here, but instead I'll be flying in this luxury plane, complete with a bedroom, fine dining and a lounge. Join me as we land on an ice runway in one of the most remote places on Earth. We'll explore by skidoo, 4x4 and find out what it's like to live here. Oh, and we can't forget a picnic in an igloo. To pick up my epic journey, let's head to Cape Town, South Africa. Well, it's a very good afternoon to you. You join me packing my kit for our expedition south. It's quite an extensive list and for good reason, given Antarctica has the coldest climate on Earth. It's surreal to think where we're going when it's summertime here in Africa. A driver has been arranged to collect me and take me over to the airport, which is around a 30 minute drive. Well, hello there and welcome back to the channel. You join me here at a pretty different site at the airport, the executive jet terminal, because of course today, well, it's a little bit of a different experience to what I'm used to. This is what's called an FBO terminal and it's very different to a usual airport. It's closer to a large hotel lounge, if I'm honest. I'm warmly greeted by the White Desert team and whilst I indulge in a light snack, my boarding pass is issued. I'm able to take a look at the jet that we're flying today. This is the Gulfstream G550. It's produced by General Dynamic Gulfstream Aerospace and costs a whopping $49 million new. Unfortunately, I cannot board directly from the FBO, therefore we'll take a short shuttle over to the main terminal building. This is because I need to go through passport control, which is currently not facilitated at the FBO. We'll need to head over to security first, something you don't usually have to do when flying private. Next up, it's passport control, and within a few minutes, I'm stamped out of South Africa. So we've just made it over to our departure gate. Of course, this is a very different experience to what you would usually have going through an airport. Got a few minutes wait here, and then we're gonna be catching, I think it's, uh, it'll be a bus or somewhat over to our plane. Having seen the plane already, the anticipation is obviously very high. I'm led over to a minivan along with three pilots and one flight attendant. Due to the length of today's flight, an additional pilot is a requirement for this return segment. Here she is again then, our Gulfstream for this evening's flight. Let's head into this sanctuary in the skies. I've never flown in a private jet before, so this really is a first. You'll note the signature Gulfstream over windows, which are absolutely huge. It's no time at all and we're ready for pushback. No safety demo per se, but let's get that seatbelt on as we taxi over to the runway. The sensation of the Gulfstream hurtling down the tarmac is quite unlike anything I've experienced before. It feels faster and obviously a lot lighter than a usual commercial plane. So what's our route? We'll be heading due south for the next five hours, over 2,700 miles to Wolfsfang Runway, nestled deep into the interior of Antarctica. Now we've reached altitude, let's boot the Tims off. I hope you like my special Timberland snow boots for the occasion. I think it's the perfect time for a proper tour of the jet. First up, there's a small forward cabin, enough to seat four passengers. I, however, have opted for the main cabin, which features a comfy sofa, dining space, oh, and a Christmas tree. I'll take the window seat, but I'm free to move around and enjoy the rest of the facilities, especially given there's only a few passengers today. So what is the seat itself like? It's a comfy leather adorned armchair, which reclines with a retractable footrest. In flight entertainment, I've got you. To your left, there's a TV stored in the armrest, which pops out at the touch of a button. Unfortunately, the only content I can find is the outside cameras, pretty useless now, but these will come in handy a bit later on. One of my favorite quirks is the window shade, which retracts like so. It's similar to what you'd get in, say, Emirates First Class. Right, I make it champagne time. White Desert serve a great Laurent Perrier. However, given the price point, I did think maybe something a little more punchy may be offered, but it was still delicious. There are, of course, a whole host of other beverages also available. Next up, we're served an amuse-bouche and presented with a menu card. My new friend and I asked to dine at the table, though do note you can retract a table at your seat. Okay, so it's a little awkward getting in once the main table is set up for dinner, but we'll manage. Mm -hmm. 
As I'm offered some warm bread, my starter is presented. A capaccio of beetroot and tomato with whipped cheese. It was fine, but it's not going to win any awards. Next up we have the charred beef fillet with dolphin wire potatoes, and this is fabulous. As I wait for my dessert, I get chatting to one of the other passengers. He's recommended me the True North Yacht in Australia, who thinks I should do this next year. Ok, dessert time, the Greek lemon cake. It's sweet, fluffy and the perfect end to my meal. With dinner out of the way, let's head to the very back of the plane and check out the restroom. It's certainly an elevated low experience compared to the likes of BA or say Delta. There's also a whole host of other amenities including high factor sunscreen which will come in use in Antarctica, trust me. The toilet is hidden away under the leather cover with a rather unique button for the flush. There are provided dental kits too and as it's effectively bedtime I'll brush my teeth before a nap. I've made up the sofa into a bed for this evening. I'll catch you all in the morning. The next day. I awake as the sun rises over the icy world down below. In truth, the sun where we're going is up 24 hours, which for me is certainly an alien concept. I'm told we have about an hour until landing, and I need to get myself ready for the Arctic conditions. I've packed merino wool base layers for my upper body and legs, along with some thermal waterproof socks. Most importantly, though, is the aforementioned sunscreen. It's very easy to get badly burnt here, so a high SPF is an absolute must. Now to get the snow tims back on, followed by an early morning caffeine hit. Yes, I've got to satisfy those Trek Trendy bingo cards. And just before we come into land, into the incredible Antarctica, it's time for a quick word from today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. You've got a phone, right? Then you should be playing Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is what happens if you crossed a blockbuster movie with a real AAA game and then squeezed it into a mobile phone. They've just released a legendary champion based off the MMA and pro wrestling Ronda Rousey. Ronda's backstory is pretty cool, training hard alongside her seven brothers to become a formidable warrior. During one tournament, Ronda's true potential as a fighter became obvious as she took on four knights barehanded. Eventually, she would make her way to the arena city of Belsar, fighting her way to become the queen of the arena. You can get Ronda for free right now, whether you're a long-time player or a newcomer. All you've got to do is log in and play Raid for seven days between now and February the 28th, and Ronda is all yours. Use special promo code RAIDRONDA to get a bunch of helpful items, which will come in handy when you're trying to level up your Ronda. And this month, there is a huge update, including a brand new dungeon and the introduction of Artifact Ascension. Also, if you're an Amazon Prime member, you can get exclusive rewards in Raid right now. If you're a new player, scan the QR code or use my link down below and you get a free starter pack worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here, available for 30 days for new players only. Thanks again Raid for making this very special trip possible. We're now on final approach into Antarctica. It feels very strange to know there's no asphalt runway down here, just ice. All wrapped up, it's time to head out into this new world, and with it my first steps on the seventh continent. As for now, it's time to explore this luxury Antarctic camp. To get to camp, we'll need to take a skidoo, which also means for some reason I've been trusted to drive. Welcome to Wolfsfang Camp, which features luxury tented accommodation, though there's an even more luxurious camp which we'll check out in just a minute. The main camp revolves around this central living space. There's comfy sofas, a wood burning stove and even a TV. Naturally there's a fully stocked bar, though given the time is about 4am, I think I'll go for a coffee initially. For now we have another mode of transport to try. Introducing the Arctic Truck, custom made in Iceland at a cost of over $100,000. Oh and you'll never guess what, once again I've been given the keys.
we're actually heading to the other side of the airstrip as there's something special for us to check out. First up is the Arctic Twin Otter, complete with skis. White Desert use these for various trips in the region, such as over to see the Emperor Penguin colonies. This is firmly on my bucket list. There is, however, a very special and rare aircraft in their fleet, needing no introduction, the Basler, based off the DC-3. It's staggering to think that this airframe was built in the 40s, and yet with a complete rebuild and modification, is among the best suited plane for the Arctic environment. The Basler flies guests some seven hours down to the geographic South Pole. What an absolute dream, again, someday. Of course, refueling is the biggest issue for aircraft down here, and this piston bully is the answer to these issues. Taking many days, fuel is offloaded from a cargo ship at the coastline and driven across the barren and treacherous Arctic landscape to reach the Wolfgang runway. Now to explore some more, we're going to go check out one of the many nun attacks. What's a nun attack, you ask? It's a summit of a mountain which protrudes from an ice field or glacier, also known as glacial islands. Well, we're going to hike to the summit of one of them. It really does take your breath away. It's been one heck of a journey here. I'm still pinching myself that I have finally arrived in the seventh continent. I think this is gonna be one of those things that takes several weeks to process because it's, uh, well, it's just beautiful. I mean, the, the images around me now speak for themselves. I've just caught sight of the new Echo Camp. It features space age luxury pods and an all important ensuite loo with shower. Right, there's time for one more surprise. Let's head back to the Wolfgang camp. You're seeing correctly, this is an igloo. Built last season and doubling as a bar, it's one unique place. Of course, I have to sit on the throne. I think we've deserved it, it's champagne o'clock. Well, it's finally time. My day trip is over, sadly. I've had the most amazing few hours here. Unfortunately, I'm not on the other seven day trip, which White Desert also run. This brings me nicely onto price. Now, obviously, this is one heck of an operation to operate a runway, several camps, and to charter jets to the Antarctic. So the price, of course, reflects that. I paid an eye-watering $14,500 for my day trip, but it was truly one of the most special trips of my entire life. Comparatively, if you want to go for the longer trip to the South Pole and to see the penguins, you'll need to brace for this one. It's $104,000 each. Now it's totally out my price range, but for what it achieves, to send guests to the South Pole in luxury, it's mind-blowing what is possible. I also have my friend Jarvis to thank for assisting in booking this trip for me. If you're interested in this or any other luxury travel arrangements with multiple perks, he's your guy. As we fly back into Cape Town, there is actually another plane which you can take over to Antarctica. This is White Desert's wet leased Airbus A340, run by Highfly, which operates business and first class. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you all again next time.